July 6th through the 8th, 2019, will represent the biblical wheat harvest of Shavuot in the Northern Hemisphere on the ancient calendar. This is based on not only the biblical instructions for calculating the days and years, but also the sign that happened seven years ago on ancient trumpets. For more information on how these dates are calculated, see the videos linked here. Shavuot is also known as First Fruits or Pentecost, and unfortunately the meaning of this appointed time has been skewed by the beast for over a thousand years. In ancient Greece and Rome, First Fruits was called a parhe, and it was a kind of tax imposed onto neighboring territories by the governmental powers. The regulations regarding this apartheid tax, or first fruits, was first imposed upon the Jews during classical antiquity, which is the period that the Greek and Roman empires flourished. During this time it was understood by the conquered people as an offering to their gods, and during the Middle Ages the Roman Church imposed it as an outright tax. Apartheid is the actual Greek word used in the New Testament to refer to the Feast of First Fruits. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, it was commanded that the Jews take the aparte, or first fruits, to the temple in Jerusalem. Scholars generally agree that the book of Deuteronomy was written between 641 to 609 BC during the reign of Josiah. This is important because the book of Daniel identifies the Neo-Babylonian Empire as the first beast which was rising to power at the exact time that the commandments in Deuteronomy were written. And this is the time when the Jews began worshipping Yahweh, which Hosea 13 and Revelation 13 tell us is the beast. So, this Greek and Roman apartheid tax, called first fruits, is described in Leviticus 23, 10-17, as the end of the Feast of Weeks. It says that seven Sabbaths after Passover, a new meat offering should be given to Yahweh. Since the Bible tells us Yahweh is the beast, which includes the Greek and Roman empires, we now know this tax of first fruits was being given to the government, not God. And this was being imposed during a time that they were being conquered by the beast. So, it shouldn't be too surprising, then, that there is a secret code in the text. Even Paul, when he was writing to Christians, claiming he was no longer working for Rome, giving them laws and saying it was coming from Jesus, he would slip in a clue here and there, telling them not to listen to him. For example, in 2 Corinthians 11.17, where he says, He does not speak the words of the Lord, but speaks foolishly, and in verse 16, those who follow him are fools. Again and again he calls himself a liar and a chief sinner and a deceiver. Why? Because he was under the control of the beast and wanted us to know. The empire was forcing the scribes to write false doctrine, so in order to get the truth out, they began to write in secret codes, giving us the true prophecies and the true message in secret. That's why Jesus said they are not meant to understand his parables. They, meaning the empire and their followers, the beast and their worshippers. This may explain why so many of the ancient Hebrew words have bizarre, almost conflicting meanings within the same word. For example, Look at this word in Leviticus 23, verse 17, where it talks about the first fruits given to Yahweh, in other words, the tax given to Rome. This word translated as wave, number 8573, means swinging, waving, offering, but it also means brandishing weapons, God's hand, weapons, and shaking. Also notice this verse refers to the bread and flour which is code in the New Testament. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 6, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and in verse 12, this is clarified to mean, Beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees. This means that the leaven is the doctrine of the Pharisees. In John 8, 44, Jesus says the devil is the father of the Pharisees and the father of lies. If the devil is the father of lies, 
and the father of the Pharisees, then this means the Pharisees are lies and their doctrine is lies. So if the leaven represents their doctrine and their doctrine is lies, then the leaven represents false doctrine or lies. In John 6, at the time of the Passover, which starts the feast of unleavened bread, Jesus tells his disciples in verses 32 through 35 that God gives the true bread of heaven and that he, Jesus, is the bread of life. Then in John 14, 6, Jesus says that he is the truth, the way, and the life. So, if Jesus is the bread and Jesus is the truth, then the bread is the truth. So, if the bread is the truth and leaven is the lies, then leavened bread refers to lies mixed with truth. In Revelation 17 14, it says, the Lamb is the King of Kings. In John 1.46, it says Jesus is the Lamb. Therefore, Jesus is the King of Kings. Revelation 19.13 and 16 says the King of Kings is the Word of God. If Jesus is the King of Kings and the King of Kings is the Word of God, then Jesus is the Word of God. If Jesus is the bread, and Jesus is the Word of God, then the bread is the Word of God. Therefore, Jesus' warning was this, Beware of the lies in the Word of God. This was also the warning in Jeremiah 8.8, 8, The pen of the scribes is in vain, but this word translated as vain, was more often translated as lies or falsehood. So it says the pen of the scribes is in falsehood. It's well known, or it should be well known, that the tactics of the deceivers heavily involve disinformation, which are lies that are mixed with truth. The truth is the bread, the leaven is the lies. They eat the bread and it tastes good but they are unknowingly bringing lies into their body. This is how the beast gained its worshipers. It mixed lies into the word of God. Jesus said in Matthew 13, 13, that he spoke in parables because even in seeing and hearing, they would not understand. Gabriel told Daniel in chapter 12, verse 10, that the wicked will not understand. This is because they eat the whole bread with the leaven instead of separating out the pure flour, the pure wheat. They read the whole word of God without separating the lies. So the feast of unleavened bread is actually the feast of pure truth and it starts a seven week countdown to the feast of first fruits for the ancient romans first fruits meant tax time but for those who eat the unleavened bread they know that first fruits represents the escape from the serpent it represents the wheat harvest which is when the wheat are gathered into the barn. For more information on the recent biblical prophetic fulfillments, see the playlist linked here. Thank you to those who make this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you again soon.